Introduction Students, today we will learn about ecosystem. Okay, teacher. Anybody knows what is an ecosystem? Yes, teacher. A system that includes biotic factors and abiotic factors functioning together as a unit. Very good. What do you mean by biotic factors? It includes all the living things. And what is an abiotic factor? It includes all the non-living things such as sunlight which helps living things to grow. Well said. In this lesson, you will learn the functioning of an ecosystem. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Describe structure and function of ecosystem Describe ecological pyramids Explain ecological succession Describe succession of plants Explain nutrient cycling Know ecosystem services Ecosystem, Structure and Function An ecosystem consists of all the biotic and abiotic factors in an area and their interactions. The arrangement of organisms in each ecosystem forms one or more layers or strata, each comprising the population of particular kind of species is called stratification. Stratification also occurs in large bodies of water such as lakes and oceans. In these, the layers are distinguished by light penetration, temperature, amount of dissolved oxygen, etc. The major functions of an ecosystem are Productivity Decomposition Energy flow Nutrient cycling Productivity Primary productivity is the rate at which energy is converted by photosynthetic and chemosynthetic autotrophs to organic substances. It is expressed in terms of weight per gram square or energy kilocalorie per meter square. The rate of production of biomass is called productivity. It is expressed in per gram square per year. Productivity can be divided into Gross Primary Productivity, GPP, and Net Primary Productivity, NPP. The total amount of productivity in a region or system is Gross Primary Productivity. A certain amount of organic material is used to sustain the life of producers and the remaining amount is Net Primary Productivity, NPP. For example, a certain amount of GPP produced by a plant is utilized by the plant itself for respiration. NPP is equal to GPP minus energy lost in respiration. The rate of increase in the biomass of heterotrophs per unit time and area is called secondary productivity. Primary productivity depends upon the availability of nutrient and various environmental factors. Decomposition Decomposition is the process in which the complex organic matter is broken down into simpler organic substances and ultimately into inorganic compounds. Detritus is the raw material for decomposition. 
Detrivores are those organisms which feed on the detritus and break it down into simpler compounds. There are following steps in decomposition. Fragmentation It is the process of breaking down detritus into simpler compounds. Leaching Natural process by which water-soluble substances such as fertilizers, pesticides are washed out from soil or wastes. Catabolism The enzymatic conversion of the detritus into simple organic compounds and then into inorganic compounds is called catabolism. The enzymes are secreted by the decomposers like bacteria and fungi. Steps of decomposition Humification the process of formation of humus is called humification. The creation of humus in soil after interaction with bacteria which has broken down dead and dying biological matter into humus. The created humus decreases the rate of decomposition. Mineralization It is the process in which the humus is degraded by certain microbes and inorganic nutrients are released. Energy flow. Producers are generally chlorophyll bearing autotrophic organisms which prepare organic compounds from inorganic raw materials with the help of sunlight through the process of photosynthesis. The green plants are regarded as the producer in the ecosystem. A consumer is the organisms that obtain nutrients or food from other organisms. This is also a heterotroph. All the animals shown in the figure are consumers and so on. Consumers are of two types. They are herbivore and carnivore. Herbivore Herbivores Herbivores feed directly on plants. They are also called first order consumers. For example, grasshopper, deer, etc are some herbivores of a terrestrial ecosystem. Protozoans, mollusks, crustaceans, etc. are some herbivores of an aquatic ecosystem. Carnivore Carnivores Carnivores are animals which feed or prey upon other animals. The carnivores which feed upon herbivores are called primary carnivores or second order consumers. For example, frog, birds, fox, cat, etc. The animals which feed upon the primary carnivores are called secondary carnivores or third order consumers. For example, owl, peacock, tiger, lion, etc. Secondary consumers are preyed upon by some larger carnivores. They are called tertiary consumers and so on. The larger carnivores such as lion, tiger, etc., which cannot be preyed upon further, occupy top position in the food chain and are called top carnivores. An animal which is able to consume both plants and animals are called omnivores, for example, human being. Decomposers are saprophytic microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi which obtain their food from dead bodies of producers and consumers and their organic wastes. Decomposers are often called microconsumers because of their small size. The transfer of food energy from the source in plants through a series of organisms with repeated eating and being eaten is referred to as food chain. The grazing food chain always starts from green plants to tertiary consumer level and green plant is the first organism to absorb solar energy. Whereas the detritus food chain starts from detrivores, in this food chain bacteria and fungi are the first ones. 
the interconnection of food chains in an ecological community is called food web. Energy flow, trophic level, organisms occupy a place according to their feeding relationships in the food chain and that place is called as their trophic level. Plants that produce energy from the sun and nutrients are the first trophic level. After that, herbivores that eat plant are at second trophic level. At the third level, First level carnivores are present because they eat herbivores. At the fourth level, second level carnivores are present because they eat first level carnivores. The amount of living material present in different trophic levels at a given time is called standing crop. The amount of energy flow decreases with successive trophic levels. Producers capture only a small fraction of solar energy and the bulk of unutilized energy is dissipated mostly as heat. Part of energy captured in gross production of producers or gross primary production GPP is used for maintenance of their standing crop, respiration and for providing food to herbivores. The unutilized net primary production NPP is ultimately converted to detritus which serves as energy source to decomposers. The herbivores provide energy to the carnivores and the unutilized energy is passed to the decomposers. Ecological Pyramids Pyramid of Number Trophic structure may be shown graphically as ecological pyramids. There are three ecological pyramids. They are Pyramid of Number Pyramid of Biomass Pyramid of Energy Pyramid of Number They show the relationship between producers herbivores and carnivores at successive trophic levels in terms of their number. There will be a gradual decrease in the number of individuals from the lower to the higher trophic levels. Pyramid of Biomass Pyramid of Biomass it is a graphical representation to show the relative amounts of biomass at each trophic level. In this, organisms are collected from each feeding level, dried and then weighed. This dry weight represents the amount of organic matter of the organisms. In aquatic ecosystem, the pyramid of biomass is inverted shaped as it shows a sharp decrease in biomass at higher trophic level. Pyramid of Energy Pyramid of Energy Energy pyramids are never inverted. These pyramids depict the transfer of energy from one trophic level to the one above and clearly show that the amount of energy available to higher trophic levels is significantly less than that available to lower levels. Ecological succession The progressive replacement of one dominant type of species or community by another in an ecosystem until a stable climax community is established is called ecological succession. The entire sequence of ecological communities successively occupying an area from the initial stage to the climax is called SER. Characteristics of succession 
it tends to progress from unstable biotic community to stable biotic community that is complete adjustment with the environment its serial stages are so regular and directional that an ecologist can often predict the sequence of future communities in successive serial stages there is tendency towards increase in species diversity total biomass niche specialization and humus content of the soil it tends to progress from simple food chains to complex food webs the habitat tends to modify from aquatic or dry conditions to mesic conditions succession of plant and animal communities occurs side by side however plant succession is easily visible types of succession there are two types of succession primary succession secondary succession primary succession it is a biotic succession that occurs on a substratum like bare rock lava sediments sand dunes new island exposed out of the sea or a newly developed lake or pond etc such a substratum is quite hostile to first life or prior community under such conditions only a few simple and hardy organisms survive the sequence of succession stages of a primary succession is called prisare primary succession following glacial retreat 1 bare rock left after the retreat of glacier 2 in time mosses and lichens start to colonize the rock as they die organic matter is added to weathered rock particles making simple soils 3 as the soils develop grasses and small herbaceous plants start to grow 4 deeper soils hold more water 5 eventually trees establish leading to the development of a climax community on mature soils secondary succession secondary succession it is a biotic succession that occur in an area which have become bare due to destruction of previously existing biotic community by fire drought landslide earthquake etc leaving a few organisms and considerable amount of organic matter the remaining species along with some new ones which invade in the area regenerate a new community the community undergoes serial changes and ultimately gives rise to a climatic climax community the sequence of succession stages of secondary succession is called subsare succession of plants there are seven stages in succession of plants plankton stage The spores of planktons reach to a newly formed water body through wind or animals. The planktonic stage mainly includes minute autotrophic organisms such as green flagellates, diatoms and cyanobacteria. These are called phytoplanktons. The population of phytoplanktons is balanced by zooplanktons that feed on the phytoplanktons. death and decomposition of phytoplanktons mix with silt and form a soft mud at the bottom of pond which favor the growth of next serial stage rooted submerged state the soft mud mixed with organic matter favors the growth of submerged plants like 
पोटामोजेटॉन हाइड्रिला बैलिसनेरिया यूट्रिकुलेरिया जेनिटेलिया एक्सेट्रा दे आर रूटेड इन द मड एंड फिल द वॉटर Accumulation of silt and sand around the plants make the water body shallower. Death and decay of submerged plants enrich the newly formed soil with humus. This makes the area less fit for the submerged plants and more suitable for the next seral stage. Floating stage. The area is invaded by the species of floating-leaved anchored plants like nymphaea. nilumbo etc these plants make the water rich in mineral and organic matter some free floating species like azolla lemna wolfia pistia spirodella icornia etc also appear there rapid growth of floating stage further builds up the bottom and makes the water shallower on the periphery reed swamp stage The amphibious plants like Typha, Phragmatus, Sagittaria, Scorpus, etc., replace the floating plants in the area. These plants produce abundant amount of organic matter and transpire huge amount of water. These plants build up shore by setting down sedimentary material and humus. The substratum now changes to a marshy soil. Marsh meadow stage. The marshy shore of the water body is invaded by carex, cypress, juncus etc. Some grasses like thymeda, dicanthium, and some herbs like caltha, campanula, polygonum etc. also inhabit the area. The plants add more humus in the area. Woodland stage. At this stage, the area is invaded by some shrubby plants. which can tolerate bright sunlight as well as water logged conditions for example cephalanthus they cast shade and make the soil dry by rapid transpiration some trees capable of tolerating sunlight and water logging such as populus alnus etc also invade the area these plants further lower down the water table by their transpiration and build up more soil climax forest the previous occupants disappear and give place to more shade tolerant and mesophytic species thus the area once under deep water becomes finally transformed into a forest it should be remembered that the nature of the climax community will depend upon the climate a forest community will develop only if the climate is moist in dry climate the climax community may be grassland or some other xeric community nutrient cycling the continuous exchange of nutrients elements among organisms and between organisms and their physical environment is called biogeochemical or nutrient cycle types of nutrient cycle gaseous sedimentary the source of gaseous nutrient cycle is present in atmosphere examples of gaseous nutrient cycle are carbon nitrogen cycle etc The source of sedimentary nutrient cycle is present in crust of earth. Examples of sedimentary nutrient cycle are phosphorus, potassium cycle, etc. Ecosystem carbon cycle all living things are made of carbon carbon is also a part of the ocean air and even rocks in the atmosphere carbon is attached to some oxygen in a gas called carbon dioxide plants use carbon dioxide and sunlight to make their own food and grow the carbon becomes part of the plant 
plants that die and are buried may turn into fossil fuels made of carbon like coal and oil over millions of years. When humans burn fossil fuels, most of the carbon quickly enters the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and traps heat in the atmosphere. Without it and other greenhouse gases, Earth would be a frozen world. But humans have burned so much fuel that there is about 30% more carbon dioxide in the air today than there was about 150 years ago. And Earth is becoming a warmer place. Ecosystem Phosphorus Cycle the phosphorus cycle is a sedimentary cycle. The atmosphere is not a reservoir for phosphorus nor does microorganisms fix phosphorus as they do nitrogen. Phosphorus enters the biosphere almost entirely from the soil through absorption by plant roots. Weathering of rocks contain phosphate materials, chiefly apatite Ca5, PO4, 3OH results in the relatively small pool of inorganic phosphorus available for organismal use. In most soils, the major amount of phosphorus absorbed by plants comes from organic molecules that undergo decomposition releasing phosphorus in plant-available inorganic forms. The release of organically bound nutrients to plant-available forms is termed mineralization. Phosphorus is used by organisms in energy transfers as a component of nucleic acids and as a structural element of membranes. Ecosystem Services Ecosystem provides following services. Maintenance of gaseous composition of the atmosphere. Climate control by forests and oceanic systems. Natural pest control. Formation and protection of soil. Conservation and purification of water. Nutrient cycling, etc. Did you know? In 1935, Arthur Transley, the British ecologist, coined the term ecosystem. With a few supplies and a sunny corner, it is possible to grow tropical fruit plants indoors. Across the globe, deforestation is a major contributor to climate change. Summary let us summarize what we have learned. An ecosystem consists of all the biotic and abiotic factors in an area and their interactions. The rate of production of biomass is called productivity. A certain amount of organic material is used to sustain the life of producers and the remaining amount is net primary productivity. NPP is equal to GPP minus energy lost in respiration. Decomposition is the process in which the complex organic matter is broken down into simpler organic substances and ultimately into inorganic compounds. Herbivores feed directly on plants. Carnivores are animals which feed or prey upon other animals. An animal which is able to consume both plants and animals are called omnivores, for example, human being. The transfer of food energy from the source in plants through a series of organisms with repeated eating and being eaten is referred to as a food chain. The interconnection of food chains in an ecological community is called food web. Organisms occupy a place according to their feeding relationships in the food chain and that place is called as their trophic level. 
trophic structure may be shown graphically as ecological pyramids. The progressive replacement of one dominant type of species or community by another in an ecosystem until a stable climax community is established is called ecological succession. There are seven stages in succession of plants. Plankton stage, rooted submerged stage, floating stage, reed swamp stage, marsh meadow stage, woodland stage, climax forest. In carbon cycle, the reservoir pool is atmosphere or hydrosphere. In phosphorus cycle, the reservoir pool is lithosphere.